Welcome back to another episode of Talk Hunting and Outdoors. I am Thomas O'Connor. So, as most of you are aware, I've been a little bit absent in the YouTube uh, realm of things. Uh, life's been a little bit crazy for all of us, uh, with 2020 being a very atypical year. I'm hoping to, to change that in the upcoming uh, fall seasons, as we all know, is quickly approaching. But as I was thinking about the 2020 seasons, I started thinking about the lack of showing you the 2019 season and how 2019 was absolutely fantastic and spectacular in many ways. But often us as hunters get caught up in the moment of the, the kill and, and harvesting that, that animal. And if you're not successful in that, it was a crappy season. Well, I just want to take a moment and say to you guys, it's not all about the kill. Often it's about spending time with family, and friends, and being outside in the, the great outdoors and being able to experience some of the awesome things nature has to offer to us. So I'd like to take some time and show you some of the things that I got to experience in 2019, even though some of them may have not have panned out the way I was hoping to be able to show you guys. But nonetheless, I was out there, we were hunting, we hunted hard, and we had some absolutely fantastic moments with both friends, family, and some of the animals that we got to interact with. So here's my 2019 season. After a quick shoot and our annual meeting, a few weeks passed, we packed up and hit the road. just got here we got set up earlier this afternoon this is our first uh, official attempt at hunting there in 2019 we're uh, just got set up as you can see we've got our tinks canisters out with the the scent and I put them out on either side of me approximately 10-15 yards one's about 20 yards to my left the other one's just over 50, well it's about 10 yards just enough that if something was to circle back and behind me this way and gets downwind, at least I have a little bit of cover scent and a little bit of an attractant in there uh, to basically try and convince that bull that we just tried calling for that I'm that I'm real. And because uh, as you can see, some of this bush behind me is it's pretty thick, it's dark, and uh, you can't really see. But I'm really pumped right now to be here. It's exciting. I have been waiting all year since I left last year the weather was absolutely terrible last year so far we've had pretty decent weather but I'm just looking up in the sky there now and it, uh, it's starting to, to get pretty dark and I'm pretty certain we're gonna get wet here in the next five or ten minutes so ho hopefully we'll be able to get something on camera it all depends on the weather
all there and uh, things are looking really good but our weather's kind of turning on us right now so the weather what we saw we we're gonna have intermittent showers over the course of today and into tomorrow as well as uh, a couple little days here and there that aren't aren't so good with with the rain but nonetheless guys if it's pouring rain i'm not gonna be able to get out and uh, get any of this stuff on on film but I'm, I'm really hoping that the weather will hold off and, and allow me to be able to record a lot of what uh, I experienced two years ago with the beautiful bull we shot, my brother and I and uh, one of the other guys that we're hunting with, Andrew. Uh, the three of us were out and we had a fantastic uh, experience with that bull. So I'm really hoping that we'll be able to get that on film and be able to teach you guys some of the things that we did. And by no means, none of us are really experts and, and any hunter really really isn't we're all guessing as to what what the best setup can be I'm just hoping to teach you guys what I I do know As we approached the middle of our hunting trip and our days continued to dwindle, we got more and more aggressive with this bull that continued to just hang up just inside the bush line. Listen to our sequence as we got more aggressive with our calling. You can hear him answering just off in the distance quite quietly. Listen close. As you could hear, we were discussing what had transpired throughout the course of the evening. If you listen closely as I start to grunt, I will reactivate the bull in his sequence in return. After each grunt that I gave, the bull then gave a quiet soft grunt 150 yards away from us.
As the sun continued to set, time was no longer on our side. As legal shooting was quickly approaching, our calling sequences were rendered useless. So we packed up our gear and headed towards the truck. As we walked down the road, we could hear the bull off in the distance continuing to call. We quickly and quietly loaded the vehicle in hopes that we could return the next morning to continue where we had left off. guys so update it's uh, Tuesday October 1st it's uh, been several days into our hunt we're almost a, a weekend of uh, pure hunting and uh, we've had some excellent activity here in the, this particular clear cut we had a bull back behind us uh, interacting with him on uh, Friday night Saturday uh, and and all day Sunday uh, Sunday night we had a little bit of a uh, run in with him. Unfortunately, he's uh, quite a bit smarter than us. Uh, and done all kinds of calling, interacted with him with raking, and he charged at us a couple times coming out and uh, just raked back and forth and would come from a long distance. And I'm telling you, it was something else to be able to to challenge him and, and coax him in from such a great distance. But uh, Sunday night, we had an opportunity to take a shot at him. He was a beautiful bull, but unfortunately, uh, my brother, when he was uh, shooting at him, uh, it was just back here about 130 yards. My brother's uh, 100 yards from me, and uh, the bull was standing about 30 yards to 40 yards from him. What he thought was about 30, 34 yards ended up being more like 40, 42 yards. Uh, reason why we were, there was a little bit of a mix up is because that uh, poplar tree that's down in behind on the road, uh, he had ranged it and it was 30 yards and the moose was standing on the other side. But what had happened is we were all packed up and getting ready and we were all getting ready to leave because it was getting close to that uh, legal shooting time and we had to get back to the truck and we only had 20 minutes and we were just going to pull out nice and quiet and come back in the morning and <laughs> as we I just put my backpack on and he was going to get the scent and uh, as I'm putting my backpack on the moose decided to to grunt and come charging out of the uh, out of the poplar trees at my brother who's collecting the scent and uh, he set that down, took his bag off, grabbed his bull, went back up onto the slash pile as he, the bull came around the corner to him, grunting. He uh, quickly ranged the tree 30 yards. Moose comes around the corner, he sees it, he draws back, sees where the tree is, guesses the yardage difference, lets one fly. There was a little branch that came off there, and he just nicked the branch and made a well uh, arrow hitting wood kind of sound and uh, from there he lost sight of the arrow and the bull kind of did a quick jump and uh, at that point turned I started to call at the bull to get him to come back he stopped he went to turn towards us to come back and then for whatever reason decided that which was probably in his best interest that it was unsafe 
and uh, continued to turn and headed back out into the clear cut grunting. I tried a few more calls and that was it. He just 45 just away and disappeared. We weren't really sure, 100% sure about that arrow and what had happened. So we let him be, we came back to camp and uh, we waited through the night and came back in the morning, but it started raining. So if there was any evidence of hitting him, it had all washed away which was uh, really unfortunate, but uh, we followed his tracks for quite some time into the into the uh, thick timber and there was no evidence of him laying down or, or anything like that. So we're, we're pretty confident with the way that he grunted walking away and uh, his behavior that there, there's no way that we, that arrow touched him or uh, did any uh, harm to the animal. So uh, great interaction, really crappy timing uh things have just kind of not been going our way that night even uh, while we were uh, sleeping heavy rains ended up uh, uh, damaging my tent and uh, broke a couple poles there but uh, that's just uh, the way it is in the north uh, for some reason somehow it started to to pool i guess i don't i really don't know uh, there wasn't no any any evidence of pooling of water but we got damaged with the uh with the uh, the tent and missing that bull, it was just kind of a crappy night altogether. With more time behind us than ahead of us, we changed up locations, collars, and even tactics in hopes to locate another bull. Hey, won't you stay a little bit longer? I'm sorry, didn't mean to, but I heard you cannot undo it. I don't know why I did what I did Somehow I think that I lost my head Don't know why Don't know why As the sun set on the last night, our moose hunt came to a close. We got up the next morning, packed up, and hit the road. We weren't leaving completely empty-handed as one of our guys and our crew had shot a nice black bear. Although we were slightly disappointed on not getting that bull, we were all very much so looking forward to seeing our families and to start our next season.
Alright guys, it's it's quarter to five and I don't know what just transpired there. I heard something off to my left. I heard a big crunch and thump and then you know comes this bear and oh my gosh, it was a beautiful bear. Anyway, I was luckily I was able to uh, to harvest him. So after uh, pulling out guys, letting this bear expire, it is a predator, I basically all I did is uh, pack up, I left, I uh, went and got a buddy here, obviously I've got somebody holding the camera and some flashlights, we came back in the dark, uh, knowing that I had made a good shot reviewing the uh, footage and that on the camera, we uh, could tell for sure that I'd hit behind the shoulder, I knew that it was a decent shot, my second shot I don't think I connected all that well. I'll have to get it on the computer and, and review it back at, uh, back at home. But uh, this is my first bear, so I'm super excited. Uh, obviously, when we were away moose hunting, one of the other lads had shot one uh, up north. But uh, this is my first bear. I was super, uh, super excited. We had him on camera a few times throughout the course of the year. And uh, hopefully now that we've got rid of this guy, uh, our uh, deer will start showing back up a little bit more frequently. And uh, I won't have to bring out near as much feed because this guy was definitely devouring it. He liked that salt block. He was enjoying the uh, feed quite a bit. So here comes the hard part. We got to get this guy out. He probably weighs about 170, 180 pounds. He's going to be a, a decent little drag. So I uh, got to get, uh, <laughs> get my buddy to put the camera down and we'll start dragging. After harvesting that black bear, my predictions were right. The next morning, a cold front moved in and the deer had started to move. Day after day, we watched deer move in, graze, and then leave. Thankfully, due to our game camera being up for months, we had pretty good research as to which deer were still around. So we sat back and watched as these little guys came and went so gracefully. As the November gun season progressed, I continued to watch young bucks coming and going. This was a tall tale sign that their hormones were raging as they began to enter into the rut. This also told me that there was better hunting yet to come. As the days went on, the deer remained to be super active. During this morning hunt, I was texting my brother and a couple of close friends, wondering if they would join me for the evening. Luckily, they did.
Oh yeah. That is gorgeous. Oh, and then I called Sam back and said, well, this just cost me about $600. Yeah, <laughs> if you're lucky. That is, that is gonna be a really nice mount. I'm like, we've shot more deer, like what he just did tonight, than any other system that we've yeah. ever done. It's just knowing what deer like to do and where they want to be. Did you did and you send it to me? Like I said, all week. Did Why? you send it to him? Yeah, it should have been. Unless the reception is. But he was after me all oh, week. He's the like, should be fine. He's like, why, uh, why aren't you sitting out on that pipeline? You've shot some big. What is it? I said that to you. Yeah. I said the biggest deer you ever shot was on the pipeline. Yeah. Why aren't you? I out said there? I can't believe you don't have a stand out there. So he, Andy just replied and said, uh, oh no, wait. Oh no, who was it? Somebody said no branches? Oh, Wayne. Yeah, that didn't come soon. Sorry, that was no branches. You see what I just said? Yeah. Branches, branches aren't an issue for the 30 out 6. <laughs> All right, boys.
As I sat there, my blind watching the spectacular animal make such a great presentation at 60 yards, I was super frustrated that the rifle season had closed just the day before. As all I had was my bow in my hand and a limb in the way, I was unwilling to take such a risk at wounding such a spectacular animal. As he went about scraping and marking, I attempted to grunt and bleed at him in hopes that I could coax him in for a closer shot. Yet, the does that were there just prior to him had greater pull than my call. As I sat there watching my primary choice buck walk away, all he did with his presentation is ramp me up and make me want to hunt harder.
as confusion set in as to what had just transpired throughout that interaction. I later took the camera off to take a peek at the video footage as to what had taken place, to later find out that the arrow upon release had struck the blind, causing it to go up and over the deer as the deer ducked my arrow. That didn't stop me from continuing to hunt. As the seasons changed, hard weather set in. As I hunted right through to the end of December in hopes to get another chance, I knew it was soon time to say goodbye to another hunting season. Last evening, the 2019 deer season, I sat there in my blind as I watched this young doe. And while sitting there, I couldn't help myself but to ponder about the events that had transpired over the last few months. The memories of my brother missing that bull, and just a few days ago where I had taken that shot and missed that buck. All these things just kept running through my head as I continued to think about the time that I had spent in the clear cuts up north, and the time I had spent in the blind with my friends and my family, with my children. All of these things kept running through my head, and it just kept coming back to me. It's not all about the kill, it's about the hunt. And the hunt is spending time with your friends and family, and just enjoying all the things that the great outdoors has to offer. Good luck to anybody that's watching this right now. I hope you uh, had a great hunt. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I'll keep you posted as bye. things go on. Hey, bye. 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 Bye.